Hi there, I'm Darren Sutton, and welcome to another brand new edition of Perfect Game Weekly. We're presented by Rawlings, and we are here in St. Petersburg, Florida, at Tropicana Field, the home of the Rays. Those very successful Rays, but this time it's Perfect Games National Showcase, a collection of 300 or so rising seniors, the very best in the land, heading into the final year of high school. Better said, it's a preview of the 20. 23 draft and this for baseball fans they've got everything in there there are games being played from sun up to sundown there are skills being tested there are coaches there are scouts you know what i'm gonna stop talking let's go inside of the trop everything once the legs are ready starts with the 60. the record was set last year 596 by Michael Gupton, a young man who is headed to North Carolina State. 596. All right, gentlemen, help me understand how to improve, to get faster, to be ready for a day like today. Go first. What'd you oh, do? Oh, man. You got to work. It's all in the mindset, man. It's all in the mindset. You got to work hard. You got to train hard. You got to run fast. Do everything as fast as you can. That's the life of me right there. Doing a lot of sprints, a lot of leg work, everything fast. All right, outfield throws, and this is where it starts. Help me understand how we're warming here. You got to get the shoulders loose. You got to get it warmed up on fire so you can throw the gas. So there used to be in the world of understanding arms, these were supposedly just for the pitchers, but you, these Jaeger bands are for you outfielders too? Oh yeah, they help out for sure. All right, you can talk me through what you're doing. You can talk me through. I like to do this, just kind of open up the chest, open up the arms, kind of get them loose, free. Uh, go here, so get the, the rotation going, so you fire back. Yeah, these are one of my favorites right here. The, the backstroke right here. It looked like the backstroke. So this is the metrics of it all, and I'm going to speak quietly because they're being exchanged out here. Radar gone over here. Throw is going into third base. Times are shared. 90 miles an hour. Right here in the middle of the infield, this is where it's really important to make sure that they get everything right. I've got to be quiet, just like a library. So I think the mistake we make when we get ready for the infield, you can keep going, keep yeah. going. I think the mistake we make is to think it's all about how hard you throw the baseball. Right. But when you're doing an event like this and you want scouts to be watching, it's about the hands as well as the arm, yeah. correct? Be smooth with it. Get live actions. You could like do this in your backyard. You could throw a ball off like your fireplace, like a tennis ball and do this. Oh yeah, in the backyard, front yard, wherever I can. Just before the game and every game, just trying to keep a good routine going. So the arm from shortstop, as we've learned, it's about the soft hands, but then you get here to flex your arm. You need to have an accurate throw, but it's about putting up a big number. The record was set by Sabine Sabalos and Blaze Alexander, 99 miles an hour. The record is Antonio Jimenez, 100 miles an hour. Congratulations, Thank man. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Did you know? No, I didn't. I, I just heard people going crazy. I turned around and I just see triple digits up there, and I went crazy. I just felt so excited. Here, let's, I'll give the couple zeros, put the finger up. Just, just, there's the 100 right there. 100, nice job, pal. Appreciate it. 100, attaboy. Go have a good rest of the showcase. Get out of here. Under the gun as a catcher, incredibly difficult when you think about the responsibility, not only handling pitchers, quick footwork, trying to nail that pop time. Tyler Marlette set the mark, 172. He's caught in the Braves organization for a long, long time. Alex Jackson threw 93 from behind the crouch, incredible. Amazing what these catchers do. This is, to me, the most fun drill. And then there's batting practice. Incredibly challenging part of this because you're kind of hitting out there, for lack of better words, naked. And many really shine at this time. You can see the athleticism and length for Mooney. H how do you hitters deal with no turtle over your head in a showcase situation? That's gotta be tough. Uh, I guess it might be a little tough. Uh, Working line drives, opposite field, up the middle, about it. And you, what is it, a big deep breath when you go out there and just have fun? Yeah, I guess so. I'd say definitely just work ethic. Uh, if you work hard, it's gonna pay off. Scale of one to 10, what do you give yourself out there? Uh, probably nine. Okay, a nine, well done. And, and another state championship for Orchard Lake St. Mary's coming up? Uh, I hope so. All right, man, thank you, I uh, appreciate you. it. national baby 
So maybe that gives you somewhat of a picture. We've got an amazing show, and this is just such an incredible event to be around. Danny Wexelman will join us with a very insightful conversation with a young man from Missouri who's looking to change his game and change the game. We'll also talk with the number one player in the land. You'll want to get to know who he is. He's not like your everyday baseball player. And Perfect Games Vice President of Player Personnel, David Ronsley, comes on the show. It's like a kid in a candy shop at this event. This is Perfect Game Weekly presented by Rawlings. We're giving you all the coverage we can of the 2022 Perfect Game National Showcase. Sitting, I need to sit. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. broke another bat. Oh my that bat. Blue bro. team has like five. We've, we've we have lost a thousand dollars in bats this year. Easily. I'm sorry, and it's the Karen. third inning. Go ahead, tap it on the ground. Tap He's here. Tap it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jesse is right there. Go ahead. Wait, wait, wait. You gonna snap it? Go, snap it. Go ahead. Oh. Man, let's see how strong he is. Let's see it. Let's see it. Let's see it. Oh! Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. I splintered in my eye. <laughs> Dude, he does it all the time for fun. It is, it's super fun. Hi, boy. Good spit. Perfect Game Weekly is presented by Rawlings National Showcase, home of the Rays, and it feels right to be inside of the Rays dugout. When the games are played at this showcase, this is where the players sit. It creates an incredible sense of self-awareness. Where do I belong? Where do I fit in? Can I ever sit in this dugout? Because that's the ultimate goal. When you think of the man out of the Midwest in Missouri, Nazan Zanatello, that is his ultimate goal, clearly. And even though he's ranked 35th in the nation, there's a lot more to learn about this talented young man, and he hopes you're paying attention. I know Danny Wexelman was. Here's their conversation. We're out here in the outfield. We're shagging fly balls, which is pretty right. cool. Right. This is your workout day at the National Showcase, the biggest event you've been to for a perfect game. Yes. How are you feeling? Are you nervous? Are you excited? Uh, not nervous at all. I mean, not at all? Not at all. Whenever you're out here, there's no pressure, honestly. Just go out, do what you do. You're here for a reason. What do you want scouts to learn? They're going to be watching you for the next couple of days. Maybe some guys who haven't seen you play in person yet. What are they yeah. going to learn about you? At a past event, I had a scout come up to me and say, oh, you're Zanatello. Uh, you're like a ghost out here. Um, Did I want, he? Yeah, I want scouts to know that like I'm a person on and off the field. I don't think a lot of people know me off the field. On the field, I have a name on my back, and off the field, I don't. I don't think you're a ghost at all. I think you're definitely, there's a lot to you. Yeah. Tell me the origin of your last name. And give me a little detail about your family. So the origin's Italian. Um, my dad's Italian. His dad was from Italy. Um, and grandpa was from Italy too. And his grandmother is Native American and Hispanic. And then my mom's African American. There's a lot of history behind all of it. You got to play in the Breakthrough Series. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of representation this year in the first couple of picks in the draft, right? right? We love right. to see that too. That's so important. Right. Why is that important to you? It's important to me because whenever you're out here, as anyone of any color, you're more comfortable around people like yourself. So playing a sport, you got to be comfortable and loose playing the game. And I feel like you're most comfortable around people like yourself. For someone who's never seen you, what are your strengths? Break those down. In the field, getting to balls, arm is great. Uh, today I posted 98 from the outfield. It's kind of surprising, honestly. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't expecting it, but... When you, wait, when you found out, what did you think? My jaw dropped. My jaw literally dropped. I turned around, saw 98, my jaw dropped. Um, are you proud of yourself? Oh yeah, gotta be. You embrace that? Yes. Is that your personality or would you say when you are off the field, maybe it's more even keel, calm? Like on the field, I'm definitely more of a character. I'm more loud on the field. Gotta be vocal, gotta be a leader. But off the field, I'm really just go with the flow. Um, I love hanging out with friends, family. I like cooking. Okay, this is Darren's favorite question. I'm okay. coming over to your house, I'm having a meal with your family. What are we eating? And also, what are we going to talk about? Well, we can talk about anything. Uh, but I feel like me and mom will throw down some tacos. A lot of pico de gallo, a lot of sour cream. That'll be good. And then I also just cooked a chicken fried rice meal not too long ago. You so cooked it? I cooked it, yes. Did you hear that? I am so <laughs> impressed. Just who I am. But I feel like for those who don't know me, it's kind of like he's a ghost. And I feel like once they get to know me, they love me. He's not a ghost <laughs> right here, man. That's awesome. All right, before I let you go hit, I got one more question for you. Maybe not? All right, I gotta go now. I'll All see you. All right, Nazan Zanatello, everybody. 
Nazan, I'm expecting the invite. I love it that you can cook. And hopefully very soon for this young man, he'll be out doing his own grocery shopping and cooking when he's on his way to professional or college baseball. I think pro is where he is headed. When we come back, David Ronsley with his top 10 or so of the talented young players that he thinks are headed to pro baseball. This is the Perfect Game National Showcase at the Trop, just outside of Tampa in St. Pete. This is Perfect Game Weekly, presented by Rawlings. With hitters like Velasquez, 93-94, if they know it's coming, is not a challenge for them. They have... They have the bat speed and the quickness to do oh, that. Oh, and Velasquez unloads to right and way out of here. Almost 100 miles an hour off the bat is Velasquez with the fourth home run of this showcase. And it's four to one. Wow. Yeah, you take hitters of that level, you throw them a fastball, they're looking for it. That's what happens. How'd that feel? Homer that PG National baby. Sick. So high. Oh my god, dude. Finally. Finally got freaking barrel. It won't bear this time. So Perfect Game Weekly celebrates the homer of Rafael Velasquez committed to go to ASU and also celebrating the big arms of Antonio Jimenez. A record across the infield, the Miami commit 100 miles an hour. In the outfield, an uncommitted athlete, 102, Miguel Hugas, who recently moved from Venezuela to Pittsburgh. He also pitched well on the mound. Hi there, folks. Welcome back to the Trop. David Ronsley, Perfect Games Vice President of Player Personnel. And, and certainly, David, for you, I want to, you know, maybe grab 10 players out of your head. But give me the theme. If we're, if we're going to start with hitters, throw a theme at me. Well, the hitters, it was, it was really all the drills and stuff. The hitting here is so hard in games, but they perform so well in batting practice. You mentioned some of the records in the throwing drills and all. But in the games, the pitchers have had it. So a lot of the evaluations from this showcase come from the drills in the BP. Will Gasparino's a SoCal guy, but he's committed to go to Texas. He's six feet, six inches tall. Well, first of all, Will has grown so much. He's gained 25 pounds in the last year. It's all muscle. It shows in the bat speed. He was a little bit coltish last year. Now he's a man. I think he's closer to 6'8 instead of 6'6. Six, six. And t big hitters have a hard time, but boy, he swung it well in the games. We saw Daniel Cuvet at the Select Festival. He's committed to go to Miami, this infielder out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. What did you see? I saw easy athleticism, enough to play at third base, and especially I saw easy bat speed. He almost went yard right over the 404 sign in center field in BP. Had a great, great swing. He's a record of achievement, and I think he stays at third, and that bat's going to play. So we saw Velasquez as homer as we bumped back from break. Just turned 17, a couple times a select festival. He's he's committed to go to, to ASU out of Huntington Beach. That's one of my favorites. Oh, yeah, and he, he really, I mean, he's obviously a well-known player. He's played a lot of baseball, and that's obvious. But he really made a name for himself this week. I don't think he replaces Blake Mitchell as the top catcher in the class, but for the last five days, he was the best catcher here. The bat was great. He's played so much that he slows the game down on defense and is so comfortable behind the plate, but boy, it was special watching him swing. Clemson commit Dylan Head, he flew, ran a 6-2-60. How did he swing it? He swung it great, and Dylan Head is so athletic. Yeah, he has pull power. We saw a home run in Jupiter from him. We saw home runs in batting practice. He's also a 6-2 runner, and that speed really plays up in games. He might be, and I'll apologize to Maxwell Clark, he might be the best athlete in this class, pure athlete, Dylan Head. I'll get you to Clark. Maybe he can comment on that comment. Let's talk about the pitchers. What did you see thematically? Give me another theme for pitching. Well, the pitching, if you throw 95 here, that doesn't guarantee anything. Right. Because we had, what, 25? Throw 95 or so. I love what I saw in the pitch ability. I loved change-ups. The cliche used to be, oh, we've got to teach a high school pitcher how to throw a change-up because he doesn't use them in high school. With a high level of travel ball now in the competition, pitchers have to use change-ups, learn them, and boy, there were some good ones this week. Garrett Bauman touched 95. He's a Central Florida commit who is 6'8". Well, you know I love big pitchers. And you don't come bigger than 6'8", 240. And Bauman's pitch is a power sinker. He gets on top of it so well. Power sink at 94, 95. I think there's more velo there. And the change is his second best pitch. He'll have to develop the slider a bit. When you have a 95 sinker and you're 6'8", you got a big league pitch. Gabe Gackle is committed to go to UCLA out of Aptos, California. He was a spin doctor. Oh, he is the spin doctor here. That was a 3,000-plus curveball. 
and it's such a fast arm, and he's a 5'11 righty. My comp is Sonny Gray um, in the big leagues, and it's that kind of arm speed and that kind of spin on the breaking ball. So when you go from Gackle, then you go to Soto, you're, you're going younger. Another Central Florida commit, but a guy that's still 16. Charlie Soto's one of the great stories this year. Oh, yeah, he and it, he's a unique story almost. He went from 6'1 two years ago to 6'3 last year to 6'5 now. He used to be a shortstop. Now I think he's the best right-handed pitcher in the class. Throws 94, 95 easy, tops out at 97, three pitches, and at 16 years old still, boy, is the ceiling high there. Dylan Questat's the number one player in Wisconsin. He's an Arkansas commit. I think you and I were calling the game, and that was really impressive. Oh, yeah, and what's the best pitch in baseball now? The one all the analysts and, and, and scouts love, the four-seam fastball, the one up in the zone. He gets so much life on it. He struck out the first six hitters he faced, and they were all good hitters. It was a dominant performance, maybe the surprise performance of this national showcase. So you wanted to put Xander Muth, who's an Ole Miss commit out of Illinois and the number one right-handed pitcher in the class, next to Aiden Keaton, side-by-side. -side. Cali Guy, who's the number one pitcher in California, right side, committed to go to Stanford. You want to put them side by side. Why? Why? Because they have very similar arm actions. It's an extended three quarters, mid three quarters. Uh, they both throw 93, 95 with three pitches. But one of the benefit I think of analytics is it's going to get rid of some of the old cliches. Before, if you saw a right-handed starter with that low whippy arm slot, the first thought is, how do you get out lefties? But I think the analytics now show paths to do that. And I think those two young men are really going to benefit that. Scouts will open their minds to that arm slot because the stuff is awesome. So I'm not going to give you as much time, but I'll see you all those that you have in your in your hand there. And I'll, and I'll raise you one Tommy White. Thomas White, oh. who is so incredible. He struck everyone out, swinging, swinging, looking, swinging, looking, swinging. The number one pitcher in this class. Quick 15 seconds before we go to production. Boy, does he do it easy. He looks like he was out there warming up at 96 and looked like he was playing catch, and it was just as easy in the game. And Oh, I pity any hitter that he has to see him when he's 23, 24, 25 years old. He's going to be really good. Thank you very much, friend. So we promised that we would talk about Maxwell Clark when we come back. A conversation with the number one player in this, the 2023 class. Where does he rank? How did he perform here? You'll get to know it all. And there's a lot more to this man out of Indiana than baseball. Thanks for hanging out with us at the National Showcase. This is Perfect Game Weekly. We're presented by Rawls. We welcome you back to Perfect Game Weekly. We're presented by Rawlings, oh, St. Petersburg, Florida. We're having a blast at the Perfect Game National Showcase. The best players in the country in the 2023 class. And the man who is ranked number one, we're going to glean some information, some knowledge from him, Maxwell Clark. Man, thanks for hanging out with us. Absolutely appreciate you having me here. I'm excited to be here. When you thought about your junior year, how much did it mean to be ready heading into your senior year? This summer between the two, what does it mean to you? It means the world because obviously coming in and hearing from people higher up, people that have been through it, like junior year is the year that you can make money. Junior year is the year that you can kill your stock. Junior year is the most important year as well as uh, your senior spring. But just coming into the season knowing that I was prepared, knowing what I was going to do, having all my events laid out throughout the entire summer was, was really, really I was really, really grateful to have that moment. And it was really, really beneficial because I knew how to manage my workload, things like that, as well as what not to do, what to do. So it was really awesome. Where has your game grown the most, I don't know, in the last six months? Oh, honestly, probably just from a mentality side. Um, learning how to balance, you know, social media, learning how to balance the hype, things like that. Um, I mean, I've always known that I could play the game. And obviously, putting in hours outside of baseball games and practices is really what makes your money. Like, I'm confident that every single day that I go into work, every single day that I go in to train, play, anything, I know that I'm going to go out there, make all my tools better, do whatever I can do to make me the best baseball player that I can be. Um, but just honing in on the mentality side, the uh, confidence, things like that, is taking my game to a whole nother level. So last year down there, I interviewed Andrew Jones, Danny Wexelman interviewed Mr. Holiday, Mikey Romero. I interviewed Elijah Green in the cage. Um, did you pay attention to the draft? Do you watch things oh, like yeah. that? Because it seems like those men were here yesterday sitting yeah. here. Now their lives are changed forever. I mean, I've been super close with Drew, Elijah, even Tamar. Um, he was on like the USA 15U team. 
So just kind of learning and pay, taking pieces of advice from them, information that they can offer, even from things outside of baseball, just how to go about some life. Um, it's been really, really special. I'm really glad that we've kind of built a connection and I'm super proud of them and as well as everybody else that I've talked to that has gotten drafted and overall everyone who got drafted. Um, you guys, your guys' lives have changed forever and that's super exciting. What was it you said in the recent interview? The cleats have to go up. They go up on the wall. I'm not doing it anytime soon. I hope you have a Hall of Fame career like my father. But what else gives you gives you joy? What else would you like to do with your life? Uh, from a like a job standpoint, uh, my brother is super super successful. He uh, became a cybersecurity lawyer with Baker McKenzie. He just kind of brought me into the litigation, lawyer, civil justice things like that. So when I if I go to Vanderbilt, um, I would like to study some sort of litigation, some sort of law. Um, I'd like to do something overseas. So like working with the U.S. Embassy, things like that, that'd be fantastic. Um, I also enjoy like weightlifting, so if I had a great career and then I just wanted to like train or coach, that'd also be awesome. I just like helping out people that need help. And so like training, coaching, helping out little kids around the community, I mean, that's all things you can do after you're done. Opening an LLC, MPO, something like that to help out kids in need, like all something that I would like to do post-career. And you also don't mind using your platform for positive. You hope to all the time. Yes. As a matter of fact, your dry black with the cross. I mean, make it a statement about your faith. That sometimes takes courage, right? It's it's been complicated. It's had its ups and downs, all of the above. But just kind of just indulging and learning as much as you can, even when you don't understand it, has been huge. It's never not yeah. complicated. Always. It's always complicated. Yeah. Hey, listen, man. Here's the coolest thing about having a conversation with you. You could be sitting here. You realize that, right? You could be hosting this and doing the interview. That is something that you should be proud of. So congratulations on how you've grown. Congratulations to your parents. They have helped with the, the confidence you've grown. We hardly talked baseball. You realize yeah, that, yeah, right? Yeah. We hardly talked baseball. Thank you, pal. Yes, sir. Thank you. I appreciate it. And we want to thank all of the athletes for taking part in this event and wish them well. We wish they all could be PG All-Americans. Danny Wexelman, thank you for your insights. David Ronsley as well. And, of course, the future of the game right here on Perfect Game TV. This has been Perfect Game Weekly from the Trop. We're presented by Rawlings. See you soon.